Welcome to the third in a series of videos on sizes and distances of things in astronomy. In the previous video, we looked at parallax, which is the apparent shift when you observe an object from two different vantage points. For example, observing your finger from two different eyes, if you rapidly blink between the two eyes, you see the shift. And we remarked that the uh, shift is much smaller for things much farther away. And so for things very far away, it might be immeasurably small. But to make that measurable, you could compensate by expanding the baseline of your measurement. So instead of using your two eyes, you could use two observatories on Earth, hundreds or thousands of miles apart. And we uh, used observatories roughly a thousand miles apart to get the parallax of Mars, and that set the scale for the entire solar system, and therefore the Earth-Sun distance. Now we're going to look at distances to other stars, and those stars are so far that we couldn't possibly see their parallax, we couldn't possibly measure that small parallax by using two different observatories on Earth. They just aren't far enough apart to measure that really small angle. So we're going to take advantage of a little trick, and we're going to use observing stations extremely far apart without having to get in a spaceship. And that is, we take advantage of the Earth's orbit. So here's the sun, and here's the Earth. It goes around in an orbit. Six months later, it'll be up here. And because the distance from the Earth to the sun is 150 million kilometers, this total distance from this point to this point is 300 million kilometers. And so if we take a picture from the Earth at this time of year, of this star over here, we see it. That star looks to be just in front of that star over there. But if we wait six months and take a picture from here, now the same star looks to be in front of the stars that are over here. And so that's a measurable shift. So we've expanded our baseline dramatically just by waiting six months. And this was first measured in the 1800s by Bessel for uh, one star. But it turned out later that the, the very nearest star that had the largest parallax shift angle was um, about 1.5 arc seconds in parallax. So these are really small angles. What's an arc second? Well, there's 60 arc seconds in an arc minute and 60 arc minutes in a degree, 360 degrees in a circle. So obviously this is a very small angle. It's about the size that a dime would appear if it were a mile or two away. That's why it had to wait until the 1800s to be measured, because it's really small, even with this huge baseline. So in fact, if I had drawn this to scale, this next nearest star wouldn't be here, it would be about 20 miles that way. And that's just the next nearest star. Obviously, all the other stars are farther away, and most of them are so far away that even with this technique, we cannot measure that angle shift and therefore we don't know how far away they are. But gradually over time, astronomers were able to get the parallaxes of thousands of stars and were able to, with that many stars, you can start to use techniques uh, that we'll have to explain in the next video for getting the distances to clusters of stars and other galaxies. And then in the 1990s, a satellite named Hipparchos was launched and got the parallaxes to over 100,000 stars accurately. So, parallax relies only on geometry, so it's very accurate, and we can do that to the nearest 100,000 stars. In the next video, we'll build upon parallax to get the distances to even further things. See you next time.